Hey everyone and welcome to this week of medical school. We are kicking off with our renal slash you could call it kidney module this morning. As far as interest goes, I'm pretty excited about the renal module just like I was for CV because I think the kidneys are pretty cool. Because it is a new module, I'm obviously going to be making tweaks to my study methods just to make sure I'm always trying to improve, but they're going to be fairly similar to the last block. But here are some of the differences that I'm making. So in the morning, I'm normally going to do Anki like normal. However, instead, we started a new PBL block, which means that we got new facilitators and it's a new time for PBL. And in the last two modules, my PBL started at 10. So starting Anki in the morning, a lot of times was interrupted by PBL and I did Anki again. However, PBL for the last two modules for me is at 4 p.m. So Anki will be uninterrupted. So I'll finish Anki in the morning. And starting off the week, I'll be reading over the weekly overview that our faculty provides for us. And this probably requires more explanation for my schedule. So on my schedule here, you can see that um, after Anki, I will do the weekly overview page. I will read what the faculty has provided for me on every Monday. So next week, you can see the same thing. However, it is supposed to be for, yeah, for week two this is going to be reading the week two and three overview page and then after i finish the week overview i'm going to be doing the lectures you can see three were due today i've already finished the three and it's about 1 p.m so i probably will try to do one for tomorrow because i do have preceptorship tomorrow and i don't want to be overloaded but normally throughout the week i will be doing lectures after anki and i do have pbls mondays and wednesdays like normal and this is just a general overview of my schedule you can see on sunday is my birthday so i want to get everything done as much as i can and this is generally the rest of my schedule and we do have a practice oski going on this week if you don't know what an oski exam is i promise you will know by the end of this video All right, guys, I finished PBL for today. I have finished all the lectures that I have to do today, including the extra one I was talking about earlier. So we're making pretty good timing today. Hopefully I can keep this up. Do you need to go to the grocery store and grab a few things? I do need to get going because I want to come back and just run on the treadmill and go through my OSCE materials. So I will see you guys a little bit. All right guys, I have made it back from the grocery store and I thought I might take this time to tell you guys what the OSCE is. OSCE stands for Objective Structured Clinical Examination, which basically means they're gonna be watching and grading us on clinical scenarios. Now this first one is our second OSCE exam. If you count the first one in the first semester where we had a history taking OSCE, where we took a full history on a patient. Now we're doing a full physical examination on our patient, head to toe, all the systems, cardio, CV, musculoskeletal, neuro, all of them and it's about 108 items with each item having different steps in itself. So I did say I was gonna work out, so what I'm gonna do is kind of smush them together. I have a quick snack here, and then I'm going to be going over a little bit of the OSCE checklist, and I'll probably get through maybe about uh, two pages and then I'll finish the other pages downstairs while I am jogging. And that is the plan for tonight. All right, everyone, it is Tuesday morning and I am running a little late. I am going to the school for my preceptorship, but I'm getting there early to practice that OSCE with my friends Tommy and Colleen. But I am, like I said, running late, so I will see you guys there. Hey everyone, I am back from my preceptorship. We had a good time there. Got to see a few patients, some with different disorders that I had learned about, I guess, in HIP, like Waldenstrom macroglobinemia, which I had never seen really out of the context of HIP or the hematology and pathology. And so that was really cool to see that. I do want to get some more renal lectures done, but I haven't finished my Aki for today because I've been so busy with doing, practicing the OSCE material with Colleen and Tommy. So I'm gonna get some of the Aki done lectures and then I really need to honestly practice 
practice the oxy material a little bit more. So after I grab some salad and coffee, I will see you guys in a different spot than my room because I'm getting kind of tired of it. <laughs> Alright guys, after finishing lecture and the Aki cards for that lecture and working on my Aski a little bit more, the Aski practice took about 45 to 50 minutes. So all I have left to do is finish my write-up for the patients I saw today in the clinic for preceptorship. And after that, I will head to bed. So I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Hey everybody, it is, what is it, Wednesday morning and I have finished Aki after a really late start to the day. However, I have gotten at least one lecture done and these are the ones I have left. I have to get renal endocrinology, which has a lot of cards. So I kind of save that because I have PBL in about two hours. And then I need to do acid-based principle and congenital, which has a lot about like cystic kidney disease and other types of abnormalities in there. So I will go probably get a snack real fast and we will keep going. Alright guys, so it is Thursday and today I'm going to be doing a physical OSCE exam for practice with an SP the school has provided. So I do have to head to the school. That session's at 3.05. It's about 1 p.m. and I finished all my dues and OSCE cards like that, but I haven't done any video lectures for today. However, I do want to be a little bit more prepared for the practice. So I generally know all the parts of the physical exam. However, I can forget things easily. So I'm trying to come up with a way to kind of run through a checklist of things and just have them boom, 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 make sure I have everything. And I'm a visual learner, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little paper and I, and I titled it OSCE Physical Exam by the Numbers. So I'm basically gonna be able to look at the patient from head to toe and say, okay, with head, there was this many items and I only did five. And I know there's six, let's say there's six, so I know there's one missing. And I'm a very visual learner, so hopefully if I'm able to draw this out and kind of look at this as the patient and remember by the numbers, okay, this had this many, this had this many, and I'm able to kind of cover my bases. So don't know if this is gonna work, but the, that is the hope. All right, guys, I finished turning this, uh long list into a kind of a uh, summary, looking from head to toe. Uh, <laughs> don't know what really happened to the face and why the eyes and nose and mouth are so low set and the ears are like on his temple. <laughs> but uh, this is just an idea of how I wanted to do basically the numbers going down the body and then also memorization purposes. So hopefully this helps. All right, guys, so I am back from the OSCE session and uh, I'm feeling better about things than I was before going into it. The weirdest thing is that I was worried about forgetting parts of the exam and parts of the exam I was really worried about were like MSK and for some reason I remembered all of that and had problems in other areas. The biggest problem for the exam for me doing the practice wasn't really re remembering or forgetting things, but little things freaked me out because I had never gotten to do it before. So for instance, when you're doing the physical exam, the patient's draped when they're laying on the bed or the table. And I had never practiced with a drape and there's just like so many like little things that go into using the drape. Like, oh, if the patient is using, doing a knee maneuver, you wanna lift the drape on one side, not both sides, have them do it, then cover it. And I just didn't practice with that because I'd never been in the rooms because of COVID and I forgot about the drape. And then also the light switch, I didn't know where it was at in the room, so whenever you're checking with the ophthalmoscope, looking at the back of the retina, turn off the lights, didn't know where the light switch was, so that kind of threw me off my rhythm. It's just like weird little things that I didn't think would freak me out, but I'm glad we got to experience it for the first time so that when we go into it, we'll know what's going on. 
I know what I need to pay attention to. And something really cool happened on the elevator. There was a physician, I don't know if he was an attending or a resident, but he's like, oh, are you a med student? And I said, yeah. He asked me what year, I said MS1. I'm actually just coming back from our very first session doing a physical exam in the room because we couldn't do it at first because of COVID. So this is the first time of us doing it. And he said, yeah, man, I, I remember that feeling of not knowing what's going on and trying to remember everything. And it can be really hard. And each time you practice, you'll get better. Each time you practice, you'll remember a little bit more so just keep your head up and so that was really cool to hear just a, you know you sometimes you need just a little realistic boost to just to know there are amazing doctors surgeons and internists and medical professionals all alike who basically have had this first moment as a first year not remembering things and struggling so just got to keep moving keep your head up and with that being said i do want to get home and get some workouts in i do have a few more renal lectures i want to watch maybe work on an application and possibly work on the physical exam a little bit more and get some more practice in. So I will see you guys home. Very low bicarbonate level. Hey everyone, it is Friday evening-ish, like afternoon-ish. Um, I finished Anki Karts this morning, been moving a little bit slow. I do have two videos that are on the schedule technically for today. Two sounds like it's not a lot, which it technically isn't, but each of the videos are both very long, has lots of cards. Like one of the videos has 200 cards assigned for one video. So if I get those two videos done, I will be happy with my day. I was gonna try to do extra one, but it might not happen because I wanna practice the OSCE more. But we gotta get going with those two videos. I do need to grab some lunch because I haven't eaten, so I'm probably gonna get some salad and some grapes. And then hopefully if I finish on time, I will go work out. Hey, I'm back. I'm back, girl. Hey. All right, guys, I am back from working out. Got on a run, some arms, some legs, some calves, and I ended with a farmer's walk, which has my wrist a little bit sore, so. So I'm gonna get some protein, drink that real fast, and go in the shower because I still have about like eight more minutes of my last video left for the week. All right guys, so I basically just watched a video on electrolyte disorders, the 200 card video. And since it has so many cards, I tend to try to focus more on the material and get it down so that when 200 card time comes around, I'm not pressing again on a bunch of cards and I forget things and then it piles up a bunch. So I made these quick sheets, just summaries over electrolytes and the abnormalities and the disorders that can happen with them. And that is about it for the week. I'm going to finish up and we finished the first week of renal, which is good, but I have so much more left to go. I really need to get that OSCE down, so I'm gonna practice some more. And by the next time I see y'all, hopefully I will have been better. And the next time I see you guys, I will also be 23 years old because my birthday is on Sunday. So thanks for joining me on this week of MedHead and I will see you guys next week.